Machiavelli gets a bad rep these days and uh, 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 typically uh, to be called Machiavellian uh, is to suggest that one is acting cynically and in one's self-interest. Uh, and, and indeed, uh, having served in the military and in the law enforcement agency, uh, there are frequently activities that you engage in as part of your operations that deliberately engage in deception, deliberately engage in Machiavellian strategy in order to, to gain successful operational outcomes. Uh, and that is necessary and appropriate. Uh, the trouble arises when you have uh, people engaging in cynical self-interest uh, to gain uh, and obtain their own personal goals and objectives uh, that are contrary to the interests of their peers, colleagues and the organisation. And Machiavellian uh, uh, conduct in that context can be enormously corrosive. When confronted by that, it is important to nip it in the bud as quickly as possible. And part of uh, the challenge with that is identifying when it is occurring, how it is occurring, and who's engaged in that activity, and then uh, uh, seeking uh, sensibly to try and align their behaviour and conduct with the norms that, uh, that are accepted as appropriate within the organisation. Once again, training, counselling, mentoring uh, may help with that. It's also important that if uh, that sort of approach is taking hold as a subculture in the organisation, to actually look at that subculture and determine whether it's appropriate or not. Uh, if the subculture is not appropriate, then it's important to seek to change the norms and the values that are practiced in that part of the organisation. Uh, this requires, uh, once again, identify the tasks, identify the systems, processes, procedures that are necessary to achieve those tasks and hold people to account in terms of doing that. My view is if you address the way people do things, you start to influence the way they think about those things and in that way you start to influence the nature of the culture in which you're working. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do and ultimately uh, you know, a reorganisation leading, leading to uh, redundancies and the moving on of difficult people uh, is perhaps the best approach. Uh, but whatever it is, it becomes highly costly in terms of the requirement for resilience by leaders, uh, the requirement for the organisation to invest resources uh, and of course all these things we've talk, talked about in terms of change and adaption and things need to go on while the organisation is doing its daily job and, and in any circumstance that's difficult.